Hey guys, this is Mr. Boyd at Denver Christian Schools. I'm going to show you real quickly how to go about building yourselves a Leyden jar. A Leyden jar is uh, the forerunner of the modern capacitor. It's a way of storing electrical charge and then releasing it after it's been stored. And um, you'll get more into the physics and the properties of the various materials and how that charge gets built up. Uh, and then transferred over, stored, and then released. But right now I'm just going to cover the basics of the materials involved and how to build one quickly and easily. Um, we're not going to go through a lot of the fancy, um, super detailed version of this where you've got special arched templates and everything like that. Um, this is the very quick, very um, short approach to making these um, at just about any skill level. Here you've got your materials. We've got three plastic cups and the important feature of those plastic cups is that they nest together with smooth walls over the majority of the cup. You don't want features with lots of grippy molded in parts and dents and dings and ridges and all that other kind of stuff. We want a good smooth tightly nested together connection between those. And I've got three of them. I really only need two but the third one acts to kind of hold things together. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is take a piece of tin foil and that only needs to be I'd say about four inches long uh, and you need two of those. Uh, the last components are glue or a piece of scotch tape. I prefer glue because it keeps things in place a little bit better as, as you're handling the entire device. A pair of scissors, again, not absolutely necessary for trimming the tin foil. You can tear the tin foil with your fingers, but some folks feel that's a little bit more accurate. You also need an insulated rod. Um, PVC is one of the best ones of these, just PVC tubing from the hardware store. But because that might not be something that people have ready access to, whereas all the rest of these kind of things are something you might expect to find in, in your home. Um, a plastic ruler might also work. And of course, the final piece of this is to use a paper towel because you're going to want to rub against this to deposit a charge in the, um, in the field there. And one final note, fur or um, wool, uh, I like a good acrylic scarf. Those are also fun materials to play around with and experiment with um, to see which ones build up the most charge and what materials do or don't build up a charge. But things like a plastic ruler may get you by if you don't have access to this. Everything else you should be able to find. Uh, that's the reason why this is a uh, tutorial which uses a paper towel. All right, let's get started. Let's take our four inch piece of foil here. I'm going to take a cup and I'm just going to run around the outside of it real quickly. I'm going to get some glue on there. Don't make this thing a big gluey mess, but just get enough to kind of tack it down. A couple of little swipes there and there. That'll hold it in place. Okay, I'm going to leave the cap off of that because I'm going to come back and use it again later here. I'm going to just get the end laid down on here. Doesn't matter if it's shiny side or dull side, none of that matters for our, our purposes here. I'm gonna get it started and smooth it out as I go along. Nice and smooth. I don't care if it kind of rolls up and around over the top and rolls out over the bottom there because I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna trim it. What I do care about is making this a nice, smooth connection. It's okay if you get a little tear or something in there, that's all right. Smooth connection. It's even okay if things don't exactly cover over each other right there. But you do want most of this end to cover over the second end here and, and we'll go past it just by an inch or so. So that's why I had you keep the top off of your glue stick because you're going to add a little bit of glue right there to that edge and tack that down. Again, you could use tape or something like that, but there we go. And now I'm just going to kind of tear or cut away the excess and I want to save the excess. Do not just start balling this up and throwing it around the room and have a good time with it. Uh, you need to save this because you're going to use it both in this experiment. Here I'm just holding my thumb against that kind of lip or edge there. You may not have that on your cup so you might want to use the scissors. Again, it's okay if it tears a little, just try to keep most of it on the cup. 
kind of coming off and I've got a nice piece there. I'm going to save that for later because both in this experiment and the follow-on experiment making an electroscope, that extra leftover uh, piece or two of tinfoil really come in handy. And again here, I'm just going to tear it. You could cut it off. Try to use some something as resistance against where you're tearing and just kind of inch along there a little at a time until you get back around. Again, this is why using the glue stick helps because the places where it's tacked down, it doesn't want to tear as easily. So there's a good outer cup ready to go. Now I'm going to take the leftover from one of my pieces, and that's going to become something for this project. The second four inch piece of foil is going to go on the inside, and this is one that you do not glue. So don't race ahead gluing because only the outer one gets glued. This one we kind of want to expand out and touch the inside of this cup, but we just want this one to hold it in place. So I really just laid that other four inch strip of aluminum over the top here, kind of held it in place, and then trimmed it up or had a friend trim it up or something like that. Uh, you might even use a temporary piece of tape, but I'd be careful with that because you don't want that tape to tear things. And just get that second piece. You can see mine has a pretty big gap there and that's totally okay. I'm going to take that piece and just stick it, nest it down inside of the one that I did first. And now we have a nice little sandwich. We've got foil, plastic, foil, and plastic. So we're going to need another layer of foil. And here's where the leftover remainder uh, scrap from one of these, set the other remainder aside and save it. Uh, save it nice and flat. Again, don't ball it up because we're going to use it. You need about that much. You need a couple of uh, square inches or so to make your electroscope. So at least save something about that size and set it aside. But the scrap from one of those, I'm going to just kind of take it here and lay it out. I'm going to build myself kind of a popsicle stick of it. I'm going to fold it into kind of a nice, I'm going to just fold and fold and fold build up kind of a nice popsicle stick sort of shape here. Don't make it really, really short because it has to stick out over the top of your cups. But if you want to kind of shorten it up a little bit, that's absolutely okay. And you want that outer part to be something that you can glide the semi can or the, the dielectric, the uh, insulator across. And I'll show you that in a second. I would make it about as wide as a popsicle stick, but if you want to try to fold it one more time, that's totally up to you. Just so it's kind of rigid like that. Twisting and all the rest of that stuff really doesn't do you any good. So right there, I've got plenty sticking up over the top. I'm just going to take my third cup. This was an example cup here that I had. I'm just going to take my third cup again. You don't have to have this, but it helps. You could use tape or something else like that just to hold it in place there. But the simplicity of the third cup and the ability to use the third cup for another part of the, uh, the experiment or later, just handy from a material standpoint. So there, I've got a nice kind of little stalk sticking up out of that. And that completes the Leyden jar. Now it's time to charge it up. I'm just going to take the rod or my ruler and rub another insulator over it. I'm depositing a charge on this. I'm taking away by quickly moving that. I'm stripping off the charge from one object and depositing it on this other one here. And I'm going to, without touching the jar, I'm going to sort of like a bow draw this first forward against that metal stalk sticking up and then back. And it's okay if you touch the cup, but what you don't want to touch is dip down in and touch the outside aluminum foil layer here. So I'm going to do that a couple times. It usually takes about three times to get a good charge on here. And you'll start to hear it popping. And again, I'm just kind of the springy, I'm allowing the springiness of that aluminum stick there to kind of help stay against the rod as I bow that past there. And here I'm going to show you a nice big charge really quickly. It only takes a few of these with an, an acrylic scarf and it really builds up a very big charge. 
You can even hear it kind of popping and crackling. It's okay if the cup moves around, but you don't want to do a lot of touching of it right now. I am going to touch it in a moment though, because what I'm going to do here is we're going to go ahead and make our spark and discharge this. I'm going to take my thumb and hold it against the outside of the cup. I'm just going to bring up my knuckle close to the popsicle stick made out of aluminum there. Whoa! And there we go, I got myself a little bit of a, a shock or a zap there um, because I completed the circuit. The electricity was able to flow between these and out to my, out to my hand. So play around with your materials, how many charges it takes, different ways to accomplish this. There's many different takes on the Leyden jar and how to build it. This is just a simple one that you should be able to build in a few minutes um, out of general household materials. Best of luck and, um, you know, be careful. <laughs>